Tour de France stage 11, absolute crazy stage um, in the end, and also, to be honest, the whole stage was quite nuts. But anyway, Garrett Thomas managed to win the stage. Um, you can see some nice nice pictures. Dan Martin did well, Roman Bardet, etc., etc. All right, so we'll scroll down to the results, and then I'll show you what happened. So there's a lot of controversy going on between Chris Froome and Garrett Thomas, because as you can see here, Garrett Thomas attacked um, to get into the Mayo Jean. Uh, and he is now, he put 20 seconds into Chris Room, 20 seconds into Demuna. And we, we scroll down the results list, you can see a lot of these guys are in the breakaway, Caruso, Nieve, Harada, uh, they're all the breakaway, but you can see Dan Martin gained some time, and then we basically have the main favourites here, Bardet, Nibli, Quintana, Roglic, and Kreuzweig. And then we have uh, Lander lost 40 seconds, so we have Zacharin lost even more time to that group, uh, and you can see the rest of them, Adam Yates lost a lot of time as well, about four minutes back, uh, almost five minutes back. So we go into the GC picture, uh, which is a very long scroll down, and you'll see Garrett Thomas is in the Mayo Jaune. He is looking very, very like controlled, to be honest, and at, this, at this moment in time. He's about a minute advantage over Chris Froome, I believe. Uh, yeah, a minute 25 over Chris Froome, a minute 44 over Tom de Moulin, and two minutes to Nibli. So you can see Garen Thomas is, you know, pretty good time trialist as well. He probably won't put time into Chris Froome or de Moulin, but he probably won't lo lose that much time, maybe only 10, 15 seconds. So it's looking pretty good for Garen Thomas. But the big question is, is Chris Froome really Team Sky's leaders, or is it Garen Thomas? For me, it's definitely Chris Froome. Uh, I feel like Garrett Thomas is just there and it's good for him to have the yellow jersey, you know, make sure he's loyal to Chris Froome. Garrett Thomas might have a bad day and also if Chris Froome suddenly starts feeling a bit shaky from uh, the Giro, then uh, it's good to have Garrett Thomas up there. But anyway, if we keep scrolling down, you can see a lot of the GC contenders lost a lot of time. Nibali's now two minutes back, Roglic two, again, I mean, everyone's sort of at least two minutes back. Keep scrolling down, you can see Zacharin's almost five minutes back. Adam Yates again is six minutes back. Like these are definitely recoverable positions. Even Dan Martin, who's gaining a lot of time, is the same time as Quintana, about three minutes, 16 back. These are pretty big gaps already. In the last year's Tour de France, just wasn't that much separation. But this one with the cobbles, a lot of... Um, a lot of crashes, I guess, in the first couple stages. That's that's sort of shaken out. The team time trial as well. And then just these mountain stages actually have summit finishes. This is what happens there. So when you have summit finishes, you actually get people attacking. Last year, there were so many times where it would be like a downhill finish. Uh, like a great one was when they went in the Galibier. And then it just finished in the valley below. So no one really attacked. Like they dropped a couple people. But like all the favorites were still there. Because no one's going to want to go full gas and then descend sort of a 5% climb uh well a five percent gradient into the into the bottom of the valley like it's just not going to happen so by having more summit finishes it makes it far more exciting but anyway let's have a look, little bit of the highlights uh here tour de france so you can see garrett thomas attacks now this climb suits him very well because it's 5.8 percent you can see chris room here is just like chilling out being like boys like i'm not chasing uh and then you can see dan martin goes and chris room manages to hop across but you'll see here like look how flat this climb is it really does not suit someone like quintana um or bardet nibbly a little bit more but it really is a power climb and like you it's sort of hard to like realize that but like at the speed they go if you think they're going like i think the average was 25.8 or something and this last part when they're attacking they'll be going at least 30 and like if you think about 30k an hour on the flat you get a pretty good draft so on a climb like you do get a good draft and a lot of it is just like overcoming air resistance more than like what's per kilo which is why for quintana to close this gap it's actually quite hard for him because these bigger guys can put out far more power like Chris Froome, Garrett Thomas, etc., Tom de Moulin. So for him to close the gap, it's actually a lot harder. Let's say it suddenly goes up to 8%. Then they're going, you know, maybe 20Ks an hour when they're attacking 25. And then suddenly it becomes a lot more a game about what's per kilo. Uh, so you can see here, like, people are, Nibali's looking tired. He's not uh, doing any work. And then Chris Froome basically attacks Dan Martin, but Dan Martin's doing well. And then Garrett Thomas again goes round him. Uh, but you can see, again, this is a very flat finish. Uh, very, very flat indeed. Um, it doesn't really suit uh, Quintana, as I was saying before. But I think Garrett Thomas has done well by managing to get up there, uh, just because he's he's now now just Team Sky have two cards to play. But you think in reality they had to do that because Kwiatkowski had finished his turn. Bernal was like, mate, the pace is too high and blew up. So it was basically Garrett Thomas would either have to set pace for Chris Froome, which would help everyone else, or attack and then just see what happens. And it was good. It was a good move by Garrett Thomas. He like by attacking, he just allowed. Uh, Chris Froome to just sit back, gain, he still gained time. Chris Froome gained time, Garen Thomas gained time, and they got the Mayo Jaune. Maybe they didn't want the necessarily yellow jersey because now they have to set pace, but they pretty much do that anyway. Like They always just 
think they have the yellow jersey. Uh, Tom Dumoulin had a good ride, attacking with Son Craig Anderson on the downhill. That was very, very good uh, riding by uh, Tom Dumoulin. Just gaining some time. He, he did put a lot into it because he was solo on a lot of that climb. Uh, but even so, it was probably worth it because I'm not sure if he would have been able to follow all of the accelerations uh, behind. But instead, he gained a, a good... 30 seconds on pretty much most of his main contenders uh, and he's now, yeah, a good, oh no, sorry, a minute on main contenders, he's now sort of like 20 seconds ahead of, uh, 30 seconds ahead of Nibali, sorry, and 40 seconds ahead of pretty much everyone else, so Tom de is looking in good position, plus like he can wipe out those TTs very well, like him and Chris Froome both are like going for GC and the time trials, probably pretty similar, they're not like, as in there might be a little, the gap, Tom de is faster, but it's not going to be like a minute, while um, for instance, it could definitely be a minute between Chris Froome or Tom de Moulin and Nibali or, um, or like Lander or Bardet. I mean, Bardet will probably lose like two minutes. So Bardet is effectively like five minutes now, probably, the poor boy. Same with Quintana. Quintana will lose some time as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting Tour de France. Tonight's stage or today's stage is out to Wes again. What will, Chris, what will Chris Froome and Team Sky do? Will they just do the same thing, set pace on out to Wes and then Garrett Thomas attack? Or will Chris Froome attack and then Garrett Thomas follow? They got a lot of cards to play, but I feel like if if the teams really want to get on, to, like really want to get Team Sky, they have to be willing to lose the two, Tour de France. They have to like all attack Chris Room. Like when Valverde went, Nibali should have been like, you know what, boys, I'm going as well. And then t Team Sky would ha then had like to chase a lot more people and would have to burn a lot more matches. And then maybe Chris Room and Garrett Thomas would have been isolated, and everyone could have just countered attack. Because you think there are more GC contenders than like the top, top Team Sky domestiques. But I think the problem is a lot of people are very content of getting a top 10. Like imagine if, you I mean, if you've seen, imagine Tom de Mula, Nibali, Roglic, Kreuzwick, Lander, Bade, Quintana, Martin, Fuglesang maybe, or maybe Valverde. Like all of them, if they suddenly just started attacking just one after each other, but the problem is they don't want to do that because they don't want to let someone else win. They're almost more content of just getting a top 10 and just, you know, like, that's it. But, like, the problem is they might attack and then someone counters and they lose, like, five minutes on the day, but then someone else apart from Froome will win. And that is the problem is that, like, they're not all on the same team. If suddenly that someone had a team as strong as Team Sky, like, let's say Movistar actually, like, worked properly as a team uh, and then were really just attacking the whole time and then it might work. But until that happens... I feel like Team Sky are just going to do the same thing where they just set pace on the climbs at like six, six and a half watts per kilo, more or less. That's, that seems to be what they sort of prefer at the Tour de France. And then they basically do that until they pop and then no one's really going to attack because if they attack, they'll just blow up. And then when suddenly Team Sky feeling strong enough, they'll just attack and then everyone else just needs to be cooked. And I mean, everyone's getting the draft. It's just to be fair, like Chris Room and Gary Thomas are stronger climbers, especially on those like 6% grains I was talking before. If they get a gap, it's very hard for the pure climbers to close it. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. I'm very excited about the Tour de France. It's now hit the mountains. There's now actually going to be some interesting racing. I just hope Dan Martin and the boys keep attacking because otherwise it could be a very boring Tour de France. Like 2015 was an absolute snooze fest. One of the most boring I think I've ever watched. Um, but because Chris, I mean, Chris Froome DA did a bit of attacking there, but it was just like, no, sorry. Yeah, 2015 was a boring one. 2016 was slightly more exciting. 2017, again, it was just so obvious Chris Froome was going to win. Um... Because it's just, it's just like the time trial. Everyone's like, oh yeah, Uran and Bardet can time trial. Just, they just, they just can't. Like, and then no one could take time, so it was so close. But there was no way of taking time because all the finishes were downhill, apart from like the Izawad. And even the Izawad has like a downhill just before the last part, anyway. So it's, it's just, yeah, it's just not great. But this one, there are definitely more opportunities to attack. The 65 kilometer stage, we might see a Movistar ambush, but I mean, no one knows. I just feel like Team Sky really do it's just. Got some big boys and a burnout. Wout pools. He'll probably start, you know, peaking for that third week. And then when you see that pools on the front and just going kilometer after kilometer at a real high pace, as Sean hates to say. Uh, and then that's that's pretty much it. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video, and I will see you in the next one.